So now that we know the relationship between pressure and temperature and volume, we can put all of that into a mathematical equation. That mathematical equation is P1, V1, N1 over T1. This is known as the combined gas law. And we're going to set that equal to P2, V2, N2 over T2. These are the original conditions, and these would be the new conditions. So, for example, in this question here, it says if a balloon has a volume of 3.8, this would be the original volume. So that would be my V1. At 25 degrees, that would be my T. Now, it doesn't make any mention of moles, which is what N is. And it doesn't make any mention of pressure in this problem. In which case, that means that those are staying consistent. They're the same number on both sides of the equation. If you wanted to, you could plug in a one for each of them. Uh, but basically what's gonna happen is they're gonna cancel out. So you could take the P's and the N's out and rewrite the equation as V1 over uh, T1 equals V2 over T2. Now, it's not that important that you know which guy invented each um, particular relationship, but this would be Charles' law uh, that we have here. So let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. We got 3.8, and that is going to be over top of 25. Now, you cannot put Celsius into this equation. It will not work because you're dividing by the temperature and because temperature can go negative if you use Celsius, you cannot use that. You have to use absolute temperature, which is Kelvin. So we're going to add 273 to that. 25 plus 273 would be 298 to plug into that equation. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. The volume is unknown, and we're going to add 273 to the 45. And I got 318. And then to solve this, we cross multiply and divide. So I end up with 298V, and that equals 3.8 times 318, or 1208.4. And we're going to divide both sides by 298. And I end up with a volume of 4.06 liters. So originally 3.8, but if you increase the temperature, the volume has to go up. And so we see it increase to 4.06. Let's go ahead and try another problem like this. So in this problem, again, I'm going to write out P1V1, N1T1. And the reason I know that this is the equation I'm using is because I see the pressure changing, 2.5, and it's changing to 4. So I have initial conditions, and I have uh, some new conditions that are occurring. Again, I see pressure changing. I see temperature changing, but I don't see volume or moles changing. So I can take those out of the equation. So I'm just going to rewrite this as P1, T1 equals P2, T2. And this is Guy Lussac's law. Uh, only the pressure and temperature are changing. The volume remains constant. And the moles re remain constant. Remember, moles is like the quantity of gas inside of the container. So that means it's a sealed container where no gas is escaping or uh, no gas is being added to the container. So we take those out. We go ahead and plug in. So initially, we have 2.5 atm. Remember, for any other unit besides temperature, you can put anything you want in, as long as the units are the same on both sides of the equation. Uh, 22 plus 273 is 295. And I don't know what the new temperature will be, but I do know that it's increasing to a pressure of 4 atm. Again, we're going to cross multiply and divide, so I get 2.5 T2. And 4 times 295 is 1180. 
We're going to divide both sides by two and a half and solve for T2. So we end up with a temperature of 472, and that is in Kelvin. We plugged Cal Kelvin into the uh, equation, you get Kelvin back out of the equation. If you did need it in Celsius, you could always subtract uh, 273 from there, and then you're back in Celsius temperature. So the Celsius temperature would be 199. Uh, degrees C. Remember, you cannot put the Celsius in there. So you have to convert it to Kelvin. If you want Celsius, you can convert it back. It's your uh, choice on that because the question did not specify which unit your answer must be in. But I assumed because they gave us Celsius that maybe we wanted it back in Celsius. One more problem like this. So we have a constant temperature and pressure this time. So that means T and P get left out of the equation, and we're left with V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. And we're going to go ahead and plug into that equation. So at two and a half moles, uh, we have a original container of 5.6. This is a little tricky because the information was out of order. It says, uh, constant temperature and pressure, two and a half moles is added to three moles of helium. I even got tricked right there. It's added to three moles. So the original situation is actually three moles inside of the container. You have to read carefully and picture what is actually happening. So initially there's three moles and then we're adding two and a half moles to it. So on the other side in my container, now that I have added to it, there is now 5.5 moles inside of that container. Uh, what will the new volume be if the original was 5.6? So that part we did get right. So we're going to go ahead and cross multiply and divide. So I got 3v2 is equal to 5.6 times 5.5. So that would be 30.8. We're going to divide both sides by three. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 10, we got 10 point, uh, we'll call it 10.3 liters there. Now this is Avogadro's law. Uh, he talks about the amount of gas and the more gas you have, the greater the volume of that gas. So this is Avogadro's law right here. All right, I hope this was helpful on how to use the combined gas law. Uh, again, there's uh, Boyle's law, which I didn't do a practice problem with that, but that would be leaving N1 and uh, T1 out and just using P1, whoops, you can't see that, just using P1, V1 equals P2, V2 uh, for a problem but it all works the same. So once you know the combined gas law, uh, you can pretty much uh, do any of the gas laws there. So thank you for watching.